Well, we had uh, finished doing uh, Extremis, Iron Man Extremis for Marvel, and uh, I think that there was enough promise there. We, we knew we were doing something experimental and kind of learning as we went, but there was enough promise there that uh, Marvel wanted to see if we could push it a little farther with the next one. One thing we didn't want to do was become complacent. I think after six issues of Extremis, we had sort of locked into a process uh, and a thought process and felt like, uh, it was probably too early to have done that. So uh, I really wanted to bring in outside voice. Uh, I think that the story we were telling was closer to a little independent film. It, it was, uh, uh, or even a play. Mike started talking to me about it uh, early on in the process when they were working on a test for one of the producers on, uh, on this Loki project to see kind of how, what the look was going to be, that kind of stuff. And so they brought me on to work on that, to help with that. and. Um, and then one thing led to another, and then the next thing I know, I'm spending you know four or five months with, with everybody. We brought Mark in to help us out. Uh, Mark has a, a film background, and we felt that help, bringing him in would help us tell the story better, because uh, some of those problems we had with Iron Man, we just weren't able to solve ourselves in the amount of time, and Mark's experience would help us up the quality on what we were doing. This is my first venture into any sort of animation. And it was a big learning curve for me, working in, in this field, um, working After Effects a lot, which I'm not. Um, I'd used it a little bit, but uh, it definitely, uh, I got a little more acquainted with it. Neil, God of Thunder. <sighs> Neil before your conqueror. Thor and Loki Blood Brothers is really taken from the uh, comic uh, called Loki. The story of uh, Thor and Loki is a story of Loki becoming the ruler of Asgard. Kneel as all Asgard must before her new and rightful lord. He has overthrown uh, Odin, the, the Allfather, and has beaten Thor. Thor, look at me. He has determined to kill his brother the next morning. And then we follow the progression of events that take place while he's on the throne. Loki is a character that has been showing up in the comics for uh, 50 years now, something in that range, but no one had ever really gotten under his skin and, and, and uh, really tried to explore what makes that character uh, who he is. Even though he is a god, that he's restricted to this one role that he has, and that's kind of the, what the comic brings out is there's this god that has all these powers, you know, he can turn invisible and he's this trickster, but he can't get out of his role, which is the trickster god. Our face revenge. He essentially is trying to convince everyone that he deserves to be in power, that he's been wronged you know, his whole life, and that's why he is the way he is. And so he grabs the nearest person he can, whether it be a guard or whoever, and says, you know, you're going to come with me, and I'm going to show you why I deserve to be where I'm at. And so it had, even the artwork almost had <clears throat> a very voyeuristic perspective. And so we thought, you know, why not just go a little bit further with that and give it sort of a handheld look when it's appropriate, almost as if there's someone, there's always someone in the corner, you know, spying or, or someone watching. But never mind, Loki. I forgive you. Since everything was revolving around Loki and his uh, thought process and how he moved through things, we had to really focus on how we could bring out uh, more emotion out of the individual characters. What? Eternity comprises many such, and I know more of these than you. I think with this one, we really wanted to focus on performance of the characters. Uh, they were certainly uh, a bit stiff and extremist uh, as we learned how to take still art and make it move. Sowing sedition among our enemies, subverting his ranks through subterfuge and subversion. In an effort to try to help um, just push the animation to the next level for Magnetica. One of the things that I suggested was shooting reference footage um, for the animators. 
And so we would figure out what the key shots were that were going to be 3D. And then I, hi I would hire a couple of actors and try to recreate the, the exact camera angle. And basically, um, they would act out the shot. We would play the audio so that it would be timed out. Tangle a joint of beef before a starving dog. When that hound, after long hours of begging, finally savages you and takes the meat and your arm besides, must it feel shame or something closer to victory? So we knew what the timing was, what the angle was, and um, come as close as we could on the composition. And then the animator could literally take that and keyframe every step of, of that action reference footage, and that's how they would build their animation. Um, and what it did enabled us to really work interactively with the actors um, to show our animators what to do because the animators they could work on a shot for two days and depending on how it was done it, it may be a complete redo and we don't want that our timeline schedules are so tight that we, we need to basically hit it as fast as we can. Sometimes it worked better than others um, and, but, but there are some shots that I think really captured some nuances of acting that we would not have gotten otherwise. Thank you.